Welcome to today's Homeowner with Danny Lipford, expert advice on improving your home. From remodeling contractor Danny Lipford and the home improvement pros from today's Homeowner magazine. Now there's just nothing nicer than being by a warm fire on a cold winter day. Now if you don't have a fireplace in your home and always wanted one, this week we'll show you some of the options that are available in fireplaces. And if you do have one and you're wanting to change the look of it, we'll show you different surround materials and different types of mantles that are available. And we'll talk with a certified chimney sweep about some of the maintenance that's required on fireplaces. Now don't go anywhere. Get warm and cozy with us here on today's Homeowner. Welcome back to the show. Now, if you're considering a fireplace for your new home or your renovation project, one of the best resources is a fireplace showroom. In a fireplace showroom, you can see a variety of different fireplaces. Many of them may be set up just like this one, already burning so that you can see exactly what it'll look like in your home. But just as important is find an expert that can answer all of the questions that you have about fireplaces. We found just that with Rick Daly here in Seattle. Now, Rick, when a homeowner comes into your showroom, what are some of the questions that you need to ask so that you can get the information to help them select their fireplace? I like to know which fireplace uh, room they're going to put the fireplace in uh -huh. so that I can better direct them as to what type of product will work for them. Well, people uh, are putting fireplaces in almost every room in the house nowadays, aren't they? They are, but in a bedroom, you might not want to have any heat. You just want good looks. Right. Where in the family room, you want a high-performance product that heats as well. Okay, all right. Yeah, in, in a number of areas, I'm sure here in Seattle, people are looking for the fireplace for that atmosphere and the ambience as well as a, a heat source. They are. What about um, any, some of the other selections, like you've got wood, you've got gas, you've got some of the pellets? Uh, I guess that has to be considered in a particular home. It depends on what you have available to you. Mm -hmm. uh, some houses have natural gas. Sometimes you have to use propane. Uh, some people like to use pellets, and then a lot of folks have acres, and they want to use that firewood. Okay. All right. What about the firewood? When you're talking about wood-burning fireplaces, which used to be is about all you could choose from you know, years ago, uh, but you have several different styles of those that are available in terms of inserts, freestanding, that kind of thing. We do. We have fireplaces that actually heat in wood burning. We have fireplaces that are decorative just for good looks. Uh, most of the wood stoves are all EPA certified and are high performance good heaters. Okay. All right. Now, what about the gas? Uh, of course, you know, a lot of parts of the country, most parts of the country have a lot of natural gas available. Um, propane tends to be a little more expensive in some areas, but um, I'm sure uh, those have really made a, they've really made a big share of the market over the last few years, haven't they? They have. Uh, the gas products have really outpaced the wood burning products in the last few years. Okay. All right. Pellets. What, what about the pellets? I'm really not familiar with that at all. Uh, pellet stoves were a big issue for several years and they've become less popular with the gas. Uh, they're a little bit more expensive than the gas products and require a little bit more maintenance. Okay, all right, so that might not be a good selection for, for a lot of people just strictly because nobody needs any extra maintenance on their house. It depends on the person, but I, personally I don't like maintenance. <laughs> okay, all right. Now, retrofit situations. People have a home and they've always wanted that fireplace. Uh, what do you have to consider when you're um, going into an existing home and installing a fireplace? Well, in an existing home, we're looking at a fireplace insert normally, unless you're doing a remodel, in which case we have a lot of choices. But we'll go in and we'll measure and we'll look for what will fit and make sure that the customer is going to uh, enjoy what it is that we've finished the installation of. Okay, all right. Glass doors. I noticed this one has a really great quality glass doors. Uh, do you recommend that? Uh, most all the gas fireplaces have glass doors on them. And in this area of Seattle, uh, glass doors are required on all fireplaces for environmental reasons. Okay. But uh, glass doors are a personal choice as well. Yeah, well, I love these. These are nice and heavy duty. Some of them tend to be a little flimsy. I guess that's one of the considerations in, in selecting them. Um, but um, those are really nice doors there. Uh, as you've heard before, you get what you pay for. Yeah. And uh, we make doors here, but we also sell doors that are manufactured around the country. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, years ago, I've had customers that would want to put some of the gas logs in and boy 10 or 15 years ago those things look bad but nowadays it's kind of hard to tell a, a real log from a gas log in many situations aren't they? The gas logs have improved greatly over the last five years and we have customers that come in and don't know the difference between a gas log and a wood burning fireplace. Hmm, that's great and um, cost wise just you know throwing a few costs out on gas logs um, what's an average cost for a good set of gas logs? 
I would say <laughs> around three hundred to four hundred dollars for a good set of gas logs with controls. Okay, all right, and then of course installation on that will just depend on how available the gas is to the particular unit. I get you know in terms of the plumber's charges. The plumbers are going to charge if you don't have gas in your fireplace already, and the installer is going to charge to come out to your house to install the logs themselves. Okay, all right. Well, your showroom's great, and I really appreciate you spending some few minutes with us today, Rick. Thank you. Get ready to review your fix-it list as Danny and today's Homeowner Magazine Repair and Maintenance Editor Joe Trurini show you this week's simple solution. Brought to you by Dodge. Now Joe, what are you doing to my bucket here? This is not your bucket anymore, Danny. Uh-oh. What I'm working on is a um, stacking storage system that you can use with five-gallon pails like this one here. Um, you can pick them up at any hardware store or lumber yard or you can use, this is an old paint one I'm using. Which, what I did is I marked the bottom about three and a half inches up and then I used the saber saw and I'm just going to cut off the bottom. And what you end up with is a shallow tray like this, which you can then set into another full-size bucket. In fact, if you can hand me that one. Okay, you're not going to be cutting this one, no, are you? No, okay. That one, okay. That one you can keep. And what you do is you cut up two or three of these trays and use them for storing nails and screws and just drop them right into the bucket. And then when you go to the job, you just carry the whole bucket with you. But now that's a pretty tight fit. Once you put a few of those in, how do you get the trays back out? Yeah, you're right. You need some kind of handle. And so here's a completed one. What I did is I just took a strip of plastic that I had cut off of the, the bucket top and I used a couple of pop rivets, one on each side so you can fold the handle down. And then you just set it in fold down the handle and stick another one on top. I guess if you wanted to kind of divide this up with maybe some, you know, small pieces of wood, I guess you could so that you could use it for smaller screws and nails. Yes, what I usually, you can use wood, but I just use a couple oh, just of pieces cardboard. of cardboard. Right. Okay, all right. Just cut a slit in each one about halfway up, lock them together, and you just stick them right in there. You want a nice tight fit so they don't shift around. Then you can put different size screws in each one. Now, that's a neat idea. I guess I need to keep saving those buckets. Keep saving them for me. <laughs> There are just about as many mantles and fireplace styles as you can imagine. And that's great because it gives you the versatility to match your new fireplace to the decor of your home and your personality. But here's a few things you need to consider. First of all, when you have your surround installed, you want to make sure you have an adequate amount of room between the firebox and the combustible material of your mantle. Now this is a marble surround, runs about $600 installed. Also, granite is very popular for this use, runs about the same amount of money. Now some other alternatives for your surround include brick. You can put brick right on the wall or even ceramic tile. Now a lot of times people that like this look maybe can't afford it. Well, ceramic tile is a good alternative because you can buy a simulated marble or granite in ceramic, install it, and you still have the look, but it's only going to cost you about $250 for the installed cost of that. Now another thing to consider is how high your firebox is. Now with this being a pre-engineered gas fireplace, it's sitting about eight inches off the floor, and this is usually required. It also can go up to another eight inches, which would be 16 inches, to create a raised hearth. You wanna bring a hearth out like this. Now because we're in a showroom, they don't have a hearth here, but it is recommended in case you have any type of flame that comes out onto carpet or hardwood floor. Now another thing to consider, of course, is when you're selecting your unit to have what we call a clean face fireplace. Now many of the pre-engineered fireplaces have vents along the bottom here for air to come into it and drawn into the firebox itself. If you have one of those, you're not going to be able to put the face piece here, so something to consider. Now, after you have your face in place, of course, the mantle is the next thing to select. Now, this mantle cost around $650 installed, and many fireplace mantles are available in kits that you're able to order and just assemble right on the job. Now, I like this one because it's a white mantle with the contrasting dark marble. But also, just the opposite looks good as well with a white marble and a stained mantle. Let me show you. Now when you select a painted mantle, you have a lot of options in the type of wood to use. As long as it's nice and smooth, it's going to be painted, it'll look great. But when you're talking about a stained mantle, you need to be careful about the type of grain that you'll end up with with the wood that you select. Of course, the stain, there's dozens of different types of stain that you can use. This particular one is an oak stain over poplar wood. 
a lot of different options out there and you'll want to pay attention to maybe the hardwood floor that you have or some of the furniture or trim that you have in the room so that it will be compatible with the rest of the woodwork in that particular room. Now this mantle will cost around $750 installed, but if you want to create your own mantle and you have a little time, a little carpentry skill and you're a do-it-yourselfer, you can create a very nice mantle for under $100 using stock moldings. Now this mantle started with a regular 1x2 and a 1x4 then a piece of standard door casing nailed to a 1x6, another one before up underneath with a piece of inside corner molding topped off with a nice piece of crown molding. Now up on top we have a 1x6 that's trimmed out with a little piece of panel mold. Now if you'd like to create your own mantle, what I would suggest is go to the home center, get a molding chart that'll show you the profile of all of the trim they have available. Then go home and experiment and have a little fun creating just the type of mantle that you want. Now not only will you create a nice looking mantle very economically, but it's one that's truly your own. Now stay with us after this Best New Product segment. We'll talk with an expert about some of the things you need to know about maintaining a fireplace, whether it's a new one or an existing one. It's time to check out this week's Best New Product with Danny and today's Homeowner Magazine Editor-in-Chief, Paul Spring. Brought to you by The Home Depot. Now this is a style of sink I've seen in a lot of kitchens. Yeah, Danny, these apron front sinks are all the rage right now. And as you know, it's, it's really appropriately named. It's this apron that sits actually below the countertop level in a special cabinet and shows this front to the world. Looks like a solid surface material of some kind. It is, Danny. It's a, it's a cast a Corian, uh, really a lifetime sink like, like any uh, solid surfacing and the maintenance is really easy. It's just an abrasive sponge. Boy, deep, deep bowls here. You could really put a good sized pot in this. Yeah, it, it really, it bellies out here and it goes almost to the backsplash and it's 10 and a half inches deep, lots of room. Now, what's the deal with the recessed area here? It looks like maybe a place for a, a name plate of the, whoever does the most dishes. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be you at your house, uh, right? I guess so. Well, I think it's me at mine too. What this is for, and this is a special part of this sink, this is the Chandler sink by American Standard, and it allows you to put a six inch tile of, of almost any description you want in there, whatever the look you're looking for, um, and it sets right in there like that, and then you can take that same kind of tile and repeat it back here at the backsplash or even on the countertop and create a real, a real look that's customized. Now large sinks like this, say in cast iron or other materials, can cost as much as $1,000. How does this run? Well, if you're going to make a decision on an a apron front sink like this, you're going to pay extra. This is for, hey, it's special. I spent a lot of time here. I want it to look special. This one lists for $8.99. Well, we looked at all the different types of fireplaces that are available out there, and we showed you a multitude of mantles. Now, what do you do once you have the fireplace as far as maintaining it safely? Or if you have an existing fireplace, what are some of the things you need to look for? Well, we have all those answers with Tommy Lovell, a certified chimney sweep. Well, Tommy, it looks like you're right in the middle of a repair here. Yeah, I've got a good one. What, what happened here? I mean, what, what, was the, what caused really the damage that you're dealing well, with? Well, the main damage, you're going to notice the uh, stains on the sides of the fireplace has caused some water getting into it, which happened over a period of years. A little neglect, and uh, it was in, in, uh, in the uh, construction of the chimney itself, the uh, water has got into the chimney outside from the steps on it, from little steps that look like little steps turned upside down. I see. And uh, you mix water and crease that together, it forms lye. And the lye has deteriorated the mortar to where the mortar joints I just got where they're real soft. Oh, I see. So little by little cracks start forming and that type of thing, and then you, you end up having some big cracks. Exactly, exactly. The water gets in behind it. Uh, the back wall lets go in here, which is holding the uh, fire brick in place. Once it lets go, then the fireplace can burn through very easily, so deterioration starts very fast, and you can see. Okay. That's why all this is so loose and and coming out of it, we're rebuilding it back over again so to make it safe again. Okay, and I know it's important to have your chimney regularly cleaned and, of course, inspected. Um, how does a homeowner find uh, the right chimney sweep in their area? Well, the, the best way I, the, I suggest everybody to do, and uh, if, they're, if they're, depending where they're at and what location of the country they're in, they can go to the National Guild has a, uh, a website. They can check a website on that or 
even in the yellow pages, most national uh, sweeps will put in there that they are a member of the National Guild. I so see. that would be the first one I would check on because they do go to school, they're certified, they're tested, they know what they're talking about. Okay. All right. Now, I know a big part of your business involves the cleaning and the inspection of existing fireplaces. Uh, what's involved in that whole process? Well, you know, usually when we come in, I'll ask the customer first thing off that, do you have any problems? And uh, then, I'll, then I'll go into the inspection part of it. The inspection includes checking the, the chimney cap, the foundation, the structure of the chimney, the flue liners, the mortar joints outside, the damper system, the fire box, uh, everything that's con constructed in the chimney itself. We have to check to make sure not only do we want it to be cleaned, we want it to be safe. Okay. All right. Now, what about the pre-engineered fireplaces? You know, those have become very popular over the last few years because they're, you know, of course, a little less expensive than a true masonry fireplace. And also gas logs, um, gas burning fireplaces. Uh, what about the need for the inspection and cleaning oh, yeah. of those? Definitely. You know, it's uh, they're put together and they're, like I said, they're pre-engineered. But it's still all in all, things can happen over a period of time, whether it's burning, storms, wind, rain, snow, what have you. They need to be checked. People are uh, on the assumption that since it's uh, made of metal or masonry or gas logs, you know, that uh, yeah, we don't need to have those checked, but it's just like your furnace in a house. It should be checked on an annual basis or every two years, and it depends on the region you live in as far as the country goes. Now, what are some of the most common things you find? I'm sure you find a lot of water problems that are causing damage um, within the firebox and so forth. And what are some of the other things you commonly find? Well, we find things like loose caps. We find... Uh, uh, spark arresters that are improperly installed on chimneys uh, that would cause the chimney to back up. We find uh, pipes that are separated. We find dampers that are rusting out or dampers are not working properly. A homeowner college said, well, my damper's not working good or it's smoking. Go over and the damper's just stuck. I see. Because it just, uh, after a while, Chris is deteriorating agent and it eats the metal up a little bit, so it causes a lot of rust. Okay. Well, I have to ask you now, Tommy, uh, thinking of a chimney sweep, you think of the top hat and the tails. Uh, where, where's your suit? Oh, I've got it with me. You know, it's just a, a thing we wear when we, we come in or when we're on the rooftop. Uh, actually, uh, not while I'm working. You know, this yeah. is something we don't use while we're working. Just but a little a, bit of show. A little bit of show. A little bit of show. <laughs> <laughs> well, great, Tommy. Well, I know you got plenty to do here. And stay with us next, our Around the Yard. Now let's go outside for Around the Yard with Danny and lawn and garden expert Barbara Katz. You know, all over the country, homeowners are having a terrible time with deer in their landscape and the damage that they do to their prize plants, especially things like their azaleas. Now I know there's a lot of different systems and, and chemicals and that type of thing that are out on the market to repel deer, but uh, what do you recommend? Well, actually, there's an entire industry that has built itself up around trying to get rid of deer. And in all honesty, a lot of these products just don't work. Um, I've tried a lot of different things. I've had some success with two chemical products called Liquid Fence and Holly Ridge. But the bottom line is if those deer are really hungry, especially in a bad winter, they're going to eat the siding off your house. <laughs> well, what about some homespun remedies? You always have these little tricks uh, that you can uh, share with us. Well, actually, a customer has just shared with me one of her remedies. She'll take a gallon of water, six eggs, mix it together, and then add what you call a sticking agent so that it'll bind to the leaves. And she sprays this on all her prize plants in the fall. And apparently, the deer just stay away right straight through the wintertime. That's a pretty simple system. And I've got one more little tip here for you. This is probably the simplest of all. This is green deodorant soap. Just go to your drugstore, buy a few bars. You can cut it into small chunks and thread something like a tie through it. And just go out, tie it onto the plants you really care about. And it absolutely seems to work. The deer stay away. Now, whether your style runs to the more formal look, more traditional look, or even a contemporary see-through model, they're all available in the vast world of fireplaces. And to further customize your fireplace, consider fireplace screen, fireplace tools, and a number of other accessories that are available. And if you need just one more remote control in your home, then consider the remote control gas unit. I'm Danny Lifford. We'll see you next week here on Today's Homeowner.